rights in Islam. So when we look at the situation in Syria or Iraq or, or other countries, people always point to that to discuss Islam. But I would challenge that. I want to ask a question. When you want to judge a religion, do you judge it by its texts or do you judge it by the actions of the people who follow it? Right? Because if you were to judge a religion by the people who follow it, then you will find corrupted people in every society. You will find people like is it Weinberg or Weinstein, what's the guy in Hollywood? Right. You know? Is he a representative of his community? No. He is a man who was corrupt, who was evil, he did bad things, and we blame him as a person. We don't blame his entire race. We don't hold every Jewish American or every Jewish person in the world accountable for his actions. If you want to judge America by Trump, I'm out of that judgment. I'm cool. I'm Canadian. Right? So, how are you going to judge an entire people because of a, a particular person? And he's not one person. Somebody voted for him, even though it wasn't the majority, but somebody voted for him, right? So, so when you want to judge people, you can't judge by the actions of people. Otherwise, you have the FARC, the largest standing terrorist army in the world in Colombia, and they're Catholics. You have the Tamil Tigers from Hindu backgrounds who are, who are the ones who invented suicide bombing. You have all kinds of people who, are, who would not be good representatives of their faith. But we have to judge by the text. So what did Islam do historically and what do the texts teach? Islam took a society, an Arab society, that before Islam had no right to women, to the extent that female children were buried alive at birth. Can you imagine? If somebody has a female daughter, if it was a girl, they would bury it alive. How do you how do you live with that? How does society take that to be acceptable? We find that shocking, but did you know that the same kind of practice goes on today in many countries around the world? There are places in India from Hindu backgrounds where so many abortions happen when they know it's a female child that the villages are 70 plus percent men now. In China, same kind of thing goes on. So even today, we have this kind of a practice. Islam came and stopped this practice. Islam came to give rights to women. A society that was built on the Islamic text, texts brought rights to women, including the right to inherit property, to own property, to operate businesses, and dispose of their earnings as they wished. And the practice of burying female children was totally abolished by the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> A society with no rights for minorities. Non-Arabs and the poor were not given rights. Even if you were Arab, but you weren't from a strong tribe, in Arabian society, you had no rights. You could be enslaved, you could be killed, you could be taken advantage of. And the poor, even from strong tribes, if they were poor and unable to defend themselves in their tribe, wouldn't. They, were, they had no rights to a society where rights were given to non-Arabs and Arabs alike. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he told us in his beautiful saying that there is no difference between an Arab and a non-Arab, between white and black, and so on, except whoever is more pious is closer to God. That's it. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what DNA you have, what race you are, whether you're white or black or what, whatever. It just matters your piety. That's the only thing that matters in front of God. That's what he taught us. And that's something that many societies struggle with today. Do we think that, that an African-American man and a Caucasian-American man get pulled over a police officer and get treated the same? Are you sure? Go check those YouTube videos. And you'll see when they shoot somebody and drop a gun on them. And then you tell me how that happens. So our society is still battling with these things which the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him took away 1400 plus years ago. And the Prophet peace be upon him, he told of his, his people, and this is an authentic report from the Muslim Imam Ahmad. O people, your Lord is one Lord, and you all share the same Father. There is no preference of Arabs over non-Arabs, not, nor of non-Arabs over Arabs. Neither is it preference of the white people over black people, nor the black people over white people. Preference is only through righteousness. What a beautiful statement. If we live by that today, imagine how much better our society would be. Animal rights in Islam. We're in California, so we're going to talk about animal rights. Mercy towards animals is something that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon us, taught us 
more than 1400 years ago. This is what the Prophet ﷺ told us. Indeed, there is divine reward. You will be rewarded for every act of kindness done to any living thing. Any living thing. A bird, a, a dog, a cat. If you are kind towards it, you will be rewarded by God. This is what the Prophet, peace be upon us, taught us. He said, if he saw any animal overloaded, overburdened, he would pull out the owner and say, fear Allah in your treatment of animals. If he saw a camel that was too overly loaded, or, or, or a horse, or a donkey, he would tell the owner of that animal that, that be mindful of your creator of Allah and don't harm this animal. Now we think, oh, but our society today, we have a lot of, we have Petco and we have all these rights for animals. Well, go up, go up to five and go up to those slaughterhouses and go out to the KFC chicken uh, raising plants where they won't let you go and, and find out how they treat these animals. In our society, we have fewer rights for animals than the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We take chickens and, and, and inject them with hormones so they, 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 they puff up and their legs break and they never walk. In their whole life, they never walk. They're in a little square. And then we go to KFC and we're like, wow, this is a big drumstick, I'm happy. You know, we have, we have cows that, that, that get, and I'm not, I'm not saying become a vegetarian. Look, we got canines, okay? I love me. I'm not saying that. But you gotta respect animals. You gotta give them rights. You gotta give them a good life. You gotta let them graze. You gotta let them be free. Everybody has a beginning and end to life, but it's how do you live your life? We go up to five, you see these, these cattle ranches here in America, in California. And all these cattle, they never see grass in their life. They're corn fed. A cow that's never seen grass. And they're pumped with hormones. There's, there's a documentary called Food Inc. You can watch it. In America, in our time, they get less rights than what the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us. He informed us that a wicked woman would be forgiven her sins and entered into paradise because of her giving water to a thirsty dog. And there's another hadith for a man as well. And he, a woman who was a sinner will go to heaven just because she gave a dog water to drink. And we're informed that there's a, there's a woman who doomed, who's doomed to hell for starving a cat. If you starve a cat, you don't let it go out and hunt and eat for itself, and you don't feed it and you kill it, you would go to hell for it. This is the kind of love and compassion for animals the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has taught.